I have a trivia question for you. What took the Athenians 10 years to build in 447 BC and then the Nashvillians another 10 years to rebuild in 1921? 2,500 years later. That's a long time. But what, do you have any idea what it was? Both took 10 years to build though. Let's show them. The Parthenon. We're not in Athens, we're in Nashville, Nashville Tennessee. Tennessee. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm Robert. And today we're gonna explore the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee. you to understand the sheer magnitude of this building because it is not little. This place is huge. The columns don't look that massive until you actually walk up to them. This is me beside a column and it goes and it goes, and it goes. It goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. Robert, how tall are you? Uh, six foot, six So, if, that, if you're six foot, spread your arms around that column again. And your span is usually about the same yeah, he can't even get a third of the way around, not even a quarter. He's barely around that column. It's huge. So one of the fun facts that we discovered today was that none of the columns are spaced evenly apart. We brought a tape measure because we wanted to find out if that was true or not. So Robert is going to measure the distance between some of the columns. What do you got there? Sorry, this one's 68 and three quarter. 68, you got it? Yep. 93 and a half. 94 and a half. So the moral of the story is if you're planning on building your own Parthenon, don't try and build to these specifications because there are none. How many columns are there? There are 46 Doric columns. There are 17 on each side, and there are six on each end, not counting the two corners, that's 46 north columns. The columns are all poured into forms, were made with aggregate and steel. The original Parthenon in Athens was carved out of pentelic marble. Keep in yes. mind, it took 10 years to build. It was carved out of marble. The Nashville Parthenon was created from brick, stone, and structurally in reinforced concrete. Yes. And it took 10 years to build. It took 10 years to build still. The same amount of time as it took humans to build 2,500 years earlier in Greece so, with solid I, marble. I think what we're telling you is, is that the Nashville infrastructure <laughs> works about as good today it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I was quite impressed with the fact that the outdoor lighting on the building was red and green. And it looks like they used some high-tech methods to create that effect. Plastic film over the top of the lights. Red and green for the holidays. Their nets installed at the top to keep the birds out from roosting and all the statues up there. Plenty of spots for birds to, to nest. Once again, inside here in the veranda area, there's 
nets up to keep the birds from getting up and nesting. Parthenon does have an elevator for those that are have problems with the stairs. Yes, you have to be very quick though because uh, I almost went back downstairs. Base here is at least is about five foot tall. There's Nike sitting in Athena's hand. These little people are all about three foot tall. Demonstrated to you the ease with which they move in the room. 
strangely, the only form that is known to exist still from the building of the Parthenon is this one, from where they poured the concrete. This is an outside of the form, and this is the, the inside of the form. You can see how that would have formed the columns, the Doric columns, and they would, you know, put these together in a circle, and then they would pour the concrete inside. So the Parthenon was originally built in 1897 as a replica of the original Parthenon for the State of Tennessee Centennial Celebration that was held here in Nashville. Originally it was made out of wood so, and plaster. At the time they had the whole, the whole park was full of other buildings that they had built including a pyramid, um, replica buildings from all over the United States and in the area. Park is where the Parthenon is located here in Nashville. This is Robert's new friend. This is Griffin. <laughs> He's my buddy. He is one of the two guardians of the uh, treasury room and he apparently is good luck if you rub his paw because everybody likes to rub his paw or maybe maybe they just like to give him a high five. High five! But yeah this is um, this is our new buddy Griffin. Not to be mistaken with Peter. It's just, seems to have a hollow head, though. I don't think and, he's too smart. Well, he doesn't... Brawn over brains? Could be. If you have mobility issues, the Parthenon is very friendly for wheelchairs and access issues. There is an elevator that leads to the second floor. Um, it doesn't take very long, usually, to get it. And it's just a simple press of the button. Plenty of artifacts and examples from the Centennial Exhibition on display. They dipped them in hot glass and then etched people's names in them. Yeah. Or words or whatever. You who always get souvenirs, they do have magnets for $7. Six dollars. You can get a statue of Athena for thirteen dollars. A shot glass for six dollars. Um, a drinking glass for nine dollars. A snow globe for seven dollars. Oh, it sparkles. And if you really like the artwork that you saw, they actually have prints that you can purchase as well. And these run from $9 to about $20. And this is actually my favorite painting in the art galleries here. One of my favorite things is collecting press pennies. For those of you that are unfamiliar with that, you just put your 50 cents in with a penny. Um, and then you choose your, which engraving you want. There's four choices on most machines and then Crank it out. Simple as that. They also have lockers. Oh, sorry, they're temporarily out of order. You have to check your oversized bags and or backpacks at the front counter in the gift shop. But they do actually have them if they're working. So, but they're not working today. Admission is adults 650, children 450, and senior citizens are 450, which is not terribly bad considering the original entry price was 50 cents for adults and 25 cents for children. Cory's Dog House. So, this is a really big menu. We have to make a lot of decisions here, but it is so good. It is so good. And they have like everything and it's super good prices. Get out of that glare there. It's super good prices. 
So yeah. So now I'm gonna go order. Oh yeah, and they have beer. One of the things I really like about here are the garage doors for yeah. like the window. Well, this one doesn't matter, but like the garage doors for the windows. So we're at Corey's dog house, and everything here is red and yellow, like mustard and ketchup. But you do not put mustard and ketchup on your hot dogs from here because they are freaking fabulous. That's their um, wall of wieners. I'm not going to show you the people's pictures, but if you can eat yourself around the USA, which is what I just showed you on their menu, you can get your picture on the wall. And Robert is working on that. So how are you doing on that, Robert? How many more do you got to go? About halfway, I think. Halfway? <laughs> I didn't know what to do with my Bang. hands. <laughs> Beautiful Chicago dog with a bratwurst. And we've got onion rings. Mushrooms. Fried mushrooms. And a Memphis dog. And what kind of sausage did you get? Did you get a hot I dog? Got or? Bratwurst. You got a brat. Okay, I got a Polish sausage on mine. Mmm. Yeah. Good stuff? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. You see, I'm not fond of that particular hot dog, but I can see where you would like it. Mm. The little peppers are just hot enough. Mm hmm. So, what all comes on a Chicago dog? Tomatoes, relish, onion, mustard, a pickle, um, spicy peppers. Right, what do you have there? I've got my Memphis dog. It's got coleslaw, and grilled onions, and bacon, and barbecue sauce, and a Polish sausage. And I don't even know how to take a bite of this thing because it is so ginormous. And the look on your face mm. tells me you like it. This is my favorite hot dog. Yeah? Mm hmm. This is what I get every time I come here. I'm never going to be on the wall because I always get the Memphis dog. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So, they filmed Percy Jackson at the Parthenon. Mm -hmm. And they filmed the outside of the building for most of it Home but the in, right but the inside of the building they yeah. see they built it at their studio the yeah. right so because the sound quality is really bad inside the Parthenon mm -hmm. and what's your comment about why they didn't film it there imagine trying to get the Hydra in there <laughs> Difficult. Yeah. Big old beast, 40, 50 foot tall. I mean, he would have knocked Athena over. I know. It's crazy. So I'm Robert, and that's Tracy. And I hope you've enjoyed one of our weird places in Tennessee, the Parthenon, here in beautiful Centennial Park, Nashville.